Hey friends, my name is Tadis, and on this channel we focus on all sorts of development topics with a key focus on Flutter. And today's video is about Invoice Ninja for Flutter and how it helps solve two main problems plus a whole bunch of other features that it has. So two main things it solves. First, you can set up payments for your own app. So if you're building some sort of app where you need to accept payments, maybe a merch store or something, you can set those up pretty easily. And two, your users can set up payments for their own products. So maybe you set up like an Amazon type of app where your users can accept payments from other users. Now, the key difference between Invoice Ninja and other payment plugins is that Invoice Ninja doesn't have vendor lock-in. So if you're using a Stripe plugin, you're kind of locked into only using Stripe. But with Invoice Ninja, you can use Stripe. And then when you want to add some other payment type, you can add that one as well. Now, on top of that, Invoice Ninja helps you create invoices, PDFs, has complete self-service portal, and then a bunch of other features as well. We'll cover a couple of them here. So with all the payment management, with all the extra features, Invoice Ninja becomes your go-to online business platform to manage everything you need, pretty much. So let's get into it. All right, so to start things off, Invoice Ninja isn't just a plugin. It's a complete service to handle your all your business needs. So if you go to invoiceninja.org, you can we can click on the test drive and this is what the product looks like. So there's a dashboard with all your invoices, everything you want to see, all your outstanding balances. On the left side, you have stuff like clients, products, invoices, payments, recurring invoices, credits, projects, tasks. You can see there's, there's so much there. And the pretty cool thing about this is it's all built in Flutter. So you can play with this UI a little bit and notice this is all flutter code so that, that's pretty cool now if you remember i said they have a lot more features than just creating invoices while they do create great invoices they have 40 plus payment gateway integrations they have that self-service portal we took a look at you can set up email reminders automatic late fees track tasks and expenses and then there's a ton of other features you can take a look at this site yourself and go through them see if it could help your business out but for now, let's get into the actual plugin and how to use it with Flutter. So this plugin is called Invoice Ninja, and you'll notice it's, an, it's a pretty early version, so this will probably get updated a lot more. But it's already supported on all six platforms that got announced in Flutter 2. And let's, let's give their package a nice little like to help out. And while you're there, put a like on the video to help me out. So you can go through this documentation, kind of get a glimpse of what Invoice Ninja does. But I decided to make it simple for you guys and break it down myself. I had to turn that little light off. I kept focusing on the light instead of me. But there's two classes that come with the Invoice Ninja package. So there's the Invoice Ninja class, and then there's the Invoice Ninja Admin class. So with the Invoice Ninja Admin class, you could just kind of pretend that you're using the portal, but it's within a Flutter app. So pretty much anything you can do in this screen, you can do in your app, but this is for like your account. And then the Invoice Ninja class is what they call their storefront API. So this pretty much allows you to allow your users to accept payments. So if you were to create some type of storefront where users can set up products that they sell on there, they will be able to accept payments to their own stores. And honestly, it doesn't get much more complex than that. For each of these classes, you can create invoices, PDFs, send the emails, have people pay their invoices on here. They can both do pretty much the same thing, but it depends for who you're doing this for. Now, I think the best way to explain it is going through some sample code. So before we get started, the first thing we're going to need is the Invoice Ninja package and also the URL launcher package. This so we can actually show our PDFs and show the portal. All right, so here we have a super simple Flutter app demonstrating both of the big classes that I talked about. The app starts in the main file and you'll see there's a storefront API and then the admin API that I was talking about. So the storefront uses the Invoice Ninja class, which brings your, lets your users accept payments. And then the admin class is basically for you, for the developer to accept payments. Now the main page just has two buttons, whichever one we want to go with. And the storefront example, we'll go over first, has an email field, a product field, and then three buttons called create invoice, view PDF, and view portal. So all that's pretty simple. We just have to implement the actual functions for it. So very first thing you need to do is to configure your actual invoice ninja to use your own key. So basically use your company account to work with. Here, we're just gonna be using the demo key with the demo app that we showed earlier. Is debug enabled to true? It just prints some extra stuff 
for you if you need it. So the next thing we do is load our products from our Invoice Ninja account. So it's pretty simple. You just load your products from Invoice Ninja. And then once you load it, you just put it into our list of products that we have defined at the very top. Then to create an invoice, since we're gonna be accepting an email here. So let's say we have tatis at tatispetra.com. We're accepting this email. We first want to create that client. So we take a client for the contact email, create that client, save it to our Invoice Ninja account, then create an invoice for that client for the specific product that is selected here. We actually don't have it because we didn't update it with the new loaded products, but let's do that right now. So there we go. Now we have the products loaded in. We can select any of these products. Again, it's an example app, so that's why they're a little different. We select it, and now you're able to create an invoice for this. So we have the client, we can save the client. Then for that client, we create an invoice for a specific product, save that invoice as well, and then set the current state of our current invoice here. This bottom part is obviously not necessary, but since we're gonna be able to view our invoice and view the portal for that invoice, it makes sense to do this. So to view the PDF, this is where we're actually gonna be using the URL launcher. So the PDF URL is stored inside our invoice object. We just call the PDF URL with a Google Doc is where it's gonna be displayed and we'll be able to see that URL. So now if we create this invoice, it will do it in the background and you'll see our options to view the PDF and view the portal show up. Now, if we view the PDF, we'll get a Google Doc. Inside this document, you see the actual email we entered and the, actual, the item and all the information for the item, and then how much it costs. And to actually view the portal, we do it this way. Basically take the invoice and any invitations that there are to pay and launch that URL. So if we click it, you'll see this says this one's unpaid. And I believe if this wasn't a demo, it actually had me pay for this here, but I see the demo app's not gonna have to me actually paying for it. And all this, which is binding up here, and all this was so that we can notice the app life cycle. So if we leave this portal and come back, you'll see this, this line of code execute. Basically, if the life cycle, the app changes at all, we check this and if it is resumed, so if we go to the portal and then come back, this line gets checked, and we can see if that invoice has been paid and then we can do whatever we want to do within the app once it's paid. So that was the more complicated part. That's setting up a payment gateway for your users. So you notice this was using the invoice ninja class. Now the other option is the invoice ninja admin class. This is gonna be super simple as well. So this is pretty much being able to use that service through an app. Now the layout of this is pretty similar again. Uh, we got some buttons here that need to be filled out. So now with the invoice ninja admin class, it's very similar. We first need to configure it. This is going to be using the demo app again. So if you were using the actual service, you would put in your own token and all that stuff. And then let's let's try to find a client that we have stored. So if we go back to the demo, let's go to clients. Let's look at their contact. Kuvalis Ashton at example.net. And here, all we're gonna be doing is printing the client name. So, so then if we click find client, let's see what the name should pop up. So from our demo app, we see for that contact email, the name is Bartel Emmerd. If we click find client, we're gonna get a bunch of stuff. This is because our debug enabled is true, but you'll see Bartel Emmerd comes out at the end. Then let's say we want to load all the invoices we have. We can just click load all invoices. This is not associated to the email, so we don't really need that, but it's for your own account to load all the invoices you have. You can click load and you'll see they perform a get to the invoice ninja invoices tab and you get all this invoice information that you'll ever need you can display nicely within your app and that's how you use the invoice ninja admin so once again to summarize invoice ninja admin is for the developer to actually accept payments or whatever stuff he needs for his business whether invoices emails all this type of stuff the invoice ninja class is for the users of your app to be able to accept payments and invoices and all that crazy stuff. So as you can see, Invoice Ninja is your one-stop shop to handle yours and your users' online businesses. Using the service, you can set up all the payment gateways, you can set up clients, track expenses, all that stuff. And then using the package, you're able to do all that stuff within an app if you want, or you could allow your users to that, do that stuff as well. So if you're interested, the links for this will be in the description to the service, to the features that it has, to the package, all the stuff we use in this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And thanks for watching.